All right, for today's hanging handstand and flow workout, I'm actually gonna be starting with a few exercises from my uh, shoulder rehab program. So this is one of my favorite exercises for um, engaging the scapular stabilizers. And it's a really good one to do for a warm up. And I'm also, I've got a really tight uh, trapezius on my right side. I feel like I need a little bit more um, work with my massage ball this morning. And also, I'm going to start doing some more mobility work for internal rotation. You know, coming back from slap tears, getting my um, flexibility back in my shoulders has been a real journey. And the focus up until this point has mostly been on shoulder flexion. Okay, so on being able to get my arms up above my head like that. And I've made good progress, you know. I've got pretty decent shoulder flexion now. And so now I'm, I'm still working on shoulder flexion, I'm getting even better. But I'm also going to shift a bit of my focus to um, internal rotation because my internal rotation is shit in my shoulders um, post slap tear. And you know, there's only so much you can do at once. And you know, especially when I've been focusing on just building so much muscle and strength. I, um, I just accepted that I couldn't do all of the flexibility training that I wanted to do. So now I'm going to do a little bit more. And so I'm going to start with a little bit of trigger point release in my external rotators. Because those are the ones that need releasing to be able to get that arm down there. You know, people that are flexible with internal rotation, they can just get their hand on the ground here, so you can see I'm nowhere near that. Oh. And now what I'll do, after I've had a bit of a work back here with this physio ball, I'm going to do some contract, relax, antagonist contract. And I'll grab under this little weight here. And that's gonna help me to get down. And then I'm going to pull my arm deeper into the stretch. And then I'll resist against it. And then I'll pull down deeper into it. And then resist against it. And pull down. And then a few reps. All right. Woo. It's even just a little bit of work like this. But if you do it, if you do this kind of thing daily, just these little things, they add up, you know. And when you're doing end range contractions, it's really important that you are right at your end range. Oh God, these external rotators are really tender today. I think my, um, my workout yesterday really hit these shoulders in all the right spots because they are bloody sore. I wish I knew this stuff when I was younger. I just didn't know how to manage my recovery and make sure that my body was capable of functioning and performing properly. And all I did was just train, train, train and push, push, push and got a lot of injuries that I could have avoided if I knew how to do this kind of stuff that I'm doing right now. 
and if I knew how to, you know, work through issues rather than just try to push through them, you know? This side's a lot better. So I just pull with it. And then I resist against it. It's really uncomfortable, you know, working into a range that you don't own. But, you know, it's a safe way to do it when you use end range contractions like that. Um, just don't force it, you know. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of this on my, uh, my trapezius. I'm going to try and get rid of this. some of these uh, spasms that I've got. I definitely think I'm gonna get myself a, um, a headband. I'm gonna be the first, I'm gonna bring back the headband. I'm gonna be the fitness YouTuber that, that brings back headbands. I'm making a comeback. That's my prediction for 2024. Everybody's doing hats, but I'm gonna bring back the headband. Oh, ho, ho, ho. So just look for those really tight spots. And all of this is connected, right? Like the stiffness I'm feeling and the discomfort is up in my neck. But then when I go down on my back, oh, I've got a couple of really good spots here. Oh. 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 And now you gotta kinda get funky to get up on your on your neck. Oh there we go. It's all about just playing around with the angles until you find that spot. Oh, and then, let's see. Oh, that's better. few rotations for my whole spine. <sighs> Ooh, all right, I'll do one more set of these. So this is all about just activating my scapular stabilizers before I go and do a workout to really get my shoulder functioning the way that it's meant to, reduce joint glide in the glenohumeral joint, which reduces muscle pain and gets the shoulder functioning the way that it's meant to. Mm. 
All right, let's go and hang. All right, that's the warm up done. <coughs> now I'm into the workout, so I'll start with passive hanging. So, doing a set of this once a day, six days a week, is a brilliant way to help improve shoulder flexibility, shoulder health, grip strength, and uh, shoulder strength as well. It's really, really good for the whole upper body. It's good for the spine as well because it decompresses your spine. So. When I'm standing, my spine's being compressed by gravity. And then uh, when you, when I'm hanging, uh, my spine is being decompressed. Oh, all right. This is how I do my hip external rotation. So I'm gonna do an end range contraction first. <sighs> And then I'll go straight into a loaded stretch. So my, um, the areas of my, for me in my lower body, hip internal and external rotation isn't great and neither are my hip flexors. So for me to try and go into a pigeon on the ground, it's just way too aggressive. And what happens is I, um, God, there are so many mozzies here. What happens is that it puts too much pressure on your knee and that causes a lot of problems. You can really damage your knee when you put lateral pressure on it. So by doing an elevated and inclined pigeon like this, it, it deloads the movement. So it's basically for somebody who isn't as flexible as uh, somebody else. And it's a really good way. Really nice and safe way to deload the movement. So I start with this end range contraction, so I get almost to end range, and then lift as hard as I can. And then straight into the loaded stretch. And my hands are not doing anything. It's just the comfortable spot to put them. I really like putting them there. All right. All right, now I'm into my single arm hang transitions if you watch my videos daily you'll know a lot of the stuff I do is the same stuff every day and that is how you get better I think one of the biggest problems that people make with their strength and flexibility is that they try and find new things to do all the time instead of repeating the things that work for long enough until their body adapts, which is what you know strength and flexibility is about. It's about adapting to a stimulus.
All right, the hardest hang of the day. three reps today. I'm feeling it. So this is for external rotation for my shoulder now. So I go to end range and then I resist against the stretch. And then I pull with the stretch. And then against it. And then pull with it. See it from here as well, from a different angle. Okay. Resist against it. And then go with the stretch, oh, which is the end range contraction. And then go against it. with it. And then again. And again. Ah. All right, now I'm working internal rotation for the hip. So end range contractions again. Got to keep the body as still as possible.
Man, everything's sore today. I went for it yesterday. And third day without coffee. God, I'm feeling it. Mm. Mm. Ah. It's a beautiful rainy day though. I love the rain. I always enjoy it. I must look crazy to you guys on these videos, clapping my hands all the time and smacking my body and the legs. But there's mozzies everywhere. It's not normally like this. There's not there's something going on this year. Oh God, even this is <laughs> painful. There's three of them all in. Oh my God, there's like seven of them around me. They're coming out in force. Bastards. All right. Oh God. You see how many mozzies there are here. Oh. Oh, it's motivating me to try and get everything done quickly. God, it's just insane. Okay. Ah, oh. so straight into my warm up set for handstands. I try to have as little as possible time between each section of my workout because that's when workouts really take longer when you you know, mosey around from section to section. So now I've got two minutes break for my first set. So, you know, it's important to just get from those wrist push-ups straight to the handstand so that I'm not wasting time between exercises. Because a workout like this can take like two and a half hours if you just mess around and, you know, you don't get it done. And, if I don't include the warm up that I do in my office, I've got the trigger point release and stuff. And I can usually get this done 
in about an hour and a half. Maybe an hour 45. So the whole thing, including the warm-up, maybe two hours. Well, it was better than the first set. I tried to get a little bit more weight over my knuckles so that I could feel my hands pushing, you know, between the heel of the palm and the first knuckle more evenly. In the first set, I had too much weight over the heel of my palm and I was moving around more and it was better. I held it longer, so that's good. I had to use the wall once or twice, but that's okay. And I'm just really trying to be where it's funny. It feels for me like I'm extending through my hips, like, like I'm doing that. But whenever I feel like I'm straight and I watch the video, I'm actually piking, I'm doing that. So it feels like I'm extending, but I think that means I'm straighter. Of course, I'll have to review the video later <laughs> to know. So much of handstand training is just repetition. It's just over and over and over again. And I've already made progress in just three weeks. I'm getting more consistent, way more consistent with my kick-ups. And I haven't had any great hold times today, but I'm more consistently doing, you know, 10 to 20 second holds with good technique. So I'm looking forward to this year because, touch wood, this is the year that I'm going to really do my handstand training six days a week for a long period of time. Handstands have, for me, always been a nice to have goal. It's never been something I've prioritized. It's been something I've just played with. I've been much more concerned about just building strength and flexibility and uh, making sure that I, you know, that any injuries that I have are dealt with. So this year I'm going to, yeah, committing to doing it six days a week and let's see what happens. See where I get by the end of the year. 
All right, round four. Well, definitely not my best round, but it's still adding volume, so I'll take it. This is a part of my workout where having my app has been so beneficial because I do so many sets. I get fatigued and I really forget what set I'm on, how many reps I'm meant to be doing. That's why you always see me come over here and go straight to my phone just to quickly start the timer for my recovery and to log my set because otherwise my recovery takes way longer than it's meant to, which means the workout takes too long, and I forget what set I'm on. Bastards. Man, if you guys could see the amount of mozzies that are flying around me, it is ungodly. I don't remember ever seeing this many mozzies in my life. It's horrible to train in. Bring on winter. These buggers away from me. This is an absolute test of willpower training in this conditions.
All right. Getting there. Humidity is starting to come through today from the rain. It's getting closer to lunchtime. But getting through it. There's so much, uh, so much upper body strength required for this flow work and something that I just did not have when I started my calisthenics and movement journey when I moved from being a martial artist of over a decade, you know, to doing this stuff. I just had no, nothing in my upper body. Oh, getting there. Yeah, you just have to keep, keep at it. If you want to <coughs> achieve big goals with movement training, with strength and flexibility, it's just about turning up and doing the work. Keeping going. <laughs> 